So the ground is idle. It has nothing to do with the harvest. If that's true and you're the ground, Mark chapter four says, a man scatters the seed in the ground. And Jesus said, the ground's your heart, your spirit. Who decides what to sow? He says, the man sows the word and scatters it. And though he does not know how, day and night, the seed all by itself begins to produce the picture on the inside of that person all by itself. You catching this? Kind of sounds like an inheritance here. I'm not laboring for this thing. I'm receiving it. You see what I'm saying? All by itself, the dirt holds the seed, but the life is in the seed. Get this. You have nothing to do with the seed. See, you have been looking at the dirt your entire life, you, and saying, I have no potential. I can't do that. I couldn't do that. I can't pay for that. Because you're looking at the field that's barren, friend. But you can plant the seed of God's word in that field, which is your heart, your spirit. You can grow anything in that thing. This is what i got to get you to understand. It's not based on your checkbook. It's not based on your history. It's not based on who you think you are. It's based on what God says. His seed is sown into you, and it produces after what he says it produces. Now, what does that do about your potential? Come on. What, how does that change your potential? How does that change your life? <laughs> it just opened up the whole, that opened up the whole thing. You mean, it's an inheritance, friend. You don't have to do it in the ordinary way. 20 bucks an hour, 15 bucks, whatever, 30 bucks an hour. I mean, the ordinary, slow, dollar for labor way. Listen, there's a faster way to do stuff. I'm not saying it's wrong to have a job and work, but if you haven't found out, a job by itself doesn't go fast enough. There's things to get done, friend. It, you know, you can't make enough money just by laboring. I mean, when God spoke to Abraham and said, go look at the stars, he was reminding him of his inheritance, which would be all those heirs, more than he could count. He said, you go out and try to count those stars, Abraham. Let me show you how big your future really is. And Abraham's sitting there, and it's impossible to have kids. I mean, it's impossible. And God's saying, you're going to have so many kids, you can't even count them. But wait a, wait a minute, I can't, we can't have. But the Bible says something very important. Very important. Romans chapter 4, verse 18. I know we don't have this on the screen. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so he became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. We looked at those stars. Without weakening in his faith, that means agreeing with what God said, he faced the fact his body was as good as dead. Yeah, we can face the fact. We have, that field's empty. Yeah, I don't have any potential. I have no potential. I mean, I don't have the money to pay for that thing. I don't, I, I don't even have the talent to earn enough money to pay for that thing, right? Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Not what you promised, what he had promised, the seed. That seed is going to produce exactly what that promise is in your life. It's going to, all you have to do, you get in this, all you have to do is hold on to it. The enemy knows that. That's why he's always trying to intimidate you and to cause you to let go of it. Did God really say? Remember the parable of the, the, the seed sower? Some people don't receive it. They're hard soil. I don't believe that. Other people hear the word with joy, the Bible says. But when trouble and persecution comes because of what? Because of the word. See, Satan knows that if that seed stays in the incubation of the earth realm in your spirit, it will produce and nothing can stop it. He has to get you to believe another lie. He has to get you to doubt God's character, that God's not good, that he can't perform. No, he has to intimidate or cause you to, to believe that the problem's bigger than God. So you let go of it and out of your mouth comes, oh, I don't know what we're going to do. How are we going to pay for that? How are we going to do that? You just chop that plant down. He knew the facts. The Bible says he could look at the facts, but he was yet fully persuaded of what God said. And he held on to that. 
And all by itself in his spirit, the Bible says Isaac was conceived by a promise. He was conceived by a promise and born by the power of God. Friend, this is your answer. This is absolutely your answer. To dig into the word of God, understand how this works and say, amen. You know, the Bible says all the promises are yes and amen. amen. They're all yes and amen. amen. They're all yes and you have to say amen. So be it. You have to receive it. Like a, the soil receiving a seed, you have to say, I'll take that one. What do you have need of? Why do you want to do without it? That woman was bound for 18 years by Satan. She didn't have to do that. The law already said she could be free. Jesus said, why shouldn't she be free? It's already legal. They were going to flog Paul until he said, this is illegal. You have to know what's legal. You have to know how this thing works. You got to stop the chaos and plant some seeds in your garden. And then you got to stay there and meditate and let the word of God produce faith. And that thing shows up. Changing the picture on the inside. Is that good? Let's review. Let's review. You have no potential to do what God says. You can't make enough money fast enough. Your assignment will take more money than you have right now. The place we call destiny, I always say, when you get to your destiny, it will require you to be able to handle more money than you have right now, require more people than you know right now. So how are you going to do it? Most people are satisfied just to pay the bills. If you ask someone, how's your finances? They say, great, define that. Well, Pastor Gary, we paid our bills on time. Yeah, we paid the car payment on time. Got a nice car, got a nice house, paid the house payment on time. Okay, well, tell me how much money you got in the bank then. Uh, $1,000. You can't do anything. You can't do anything. You're a slave. You're saying labor in envelopes every month. You're a slave. Slaves can't do anything interesting. In fact, they don't even think anything interesting. Talk to a slave, what do they want to do? Get off work. <laughs> slaves don't dream big dreams because in a slave's mind, it all means more work. It does. It all means more work. They don't look for big dreams because it means more work. They're already worked as hard as they can work. No, what you need is a Holy Spirit strategy and idea. How do you get that? Sow the seed. You know the story. My wife and I, we were in debt. I mean, seriously in debt. Nine years, hopelessly messed up in debt. How do we become millionaires? If I was that good, I would have done it back then. Right? I mean, really, I used to dream about what it would feel like to have $100 that I didn't know anyone. And I couldn't even see that. I couldn't see it. Couldn't see it. What did God have to do? He had to change my thinking. He had to show me how the kingdom worked. He had changed my picture, showed me how the word works. I had to receive that word. I had to receive that seed that it was possible. I had to hold on to it. Then he began, I began to see, he began to show me pictures. He gave me a dream to start a company. That company's still producing today, hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit. Almost 40 years ago. Changed my life. Listen, one dream from God can change your entire life. One direction, one divine appointment, one bit of favor, one bit of wisdom, one bit of supernatural strategy that you hear by the Holy Spirit can literally revolutionize your life, your friend's life, your family's life, your destiny, your everything, your lineage, all that. But you have to stop thinking about the dirt. You've got to stop seeing the dirt. Who are you? I don't, I don't always see as nothing. I have no talent. I have no ability. I have no money. I always see as dirt. Nothing's there. But you have the dirt. 
sow the seed in the dirt. All by itself, the seed begins to grow. The life is in the seed. You don't have, here's, the, here's, the, here's something to free you up. You don't have to know how God's going to bring that money. You don't have to even have a clue how he's going to do it. He may give you the craziest idea in the world. Peter, you got taxes to pay? Go catch a fish with a coin in its mouth. I mean, he may give you the craziest thought that you've ever had that could become a multi-million dollar business. Just plant the seed. Find a seed that pertains to your need. Receive that seed. I'll end with this story. Many have heard it before. When we were first learning the kingdom, uh, we, we got out of debt. Do you know how that felt? I mean, that was like a dream come true. I mean, to tell you, man, I mean, we pinched ourselves every day. I mean, just to get out of debt was like, uh, you, you know, you get out of debt, you begin to dream dreams again. You have no vision when you're in debt. All you think about is paying the bills. But I always say provision <laughs> is provision. Pro-vision is provision. When I got out of debt, all of a sudden, I couldn't contain all the ideas. Man, I started writing them down. Fast like I write. This idea, you can do this business, you can buy this, you can do this. I said, man, I've never done that before. It's like ideas begin to pop up. So we began to go to churches because we were out of debt. We began to tell people how we got out of debt. We didn't really have all the kingdom understanding yet, but we had enough. And we began to tell people, you know what? They wanted to hear about it. They were excited about it. Well, how'd, how'd you do that? Tell me, how's that work? I need to get out of debt, right? And so we were at this one church and the pastor said, hey, why don't you come over to the house? The parsonage is right next door. Why don't you have some dessert before you drive back to Columbus? This is down in, down in Albany, maybe two hour drive from here, something like that. Sure, we'll have, uh, sounds good to me. So we went over to the house and his mother's there. She's like 76 or so, something like that. And she had baked these pies, apple pies. They were still warm, pretty good. I said, yeah, I'll take some of that. And uh, so we had a piece of pie with ice cream on it. And she said, I'll have a second one. I mean, a big old piece. She's like, little, little woman, I'll have, I'll have another piece. And she, she could see that I was kind of, really, you know, I was really, this is a big old piece, you know, two big pieces. I thought, wow. She, then she said, oh, she said, I eat all the dessert I can eat. Really? I'd like that. Tell me about it. <laughs> Tell me about it. Says, I eat all the dessert I can. I eat it all the time. I said, she said oh, I, I was a diabetic for 20 years. I couldn't even touch sugar. I've been in the hospital, had comas, almost died several times. Until one day I read in the Bible that Jesus heals. Amen. So I wrote three scriptures, just three scriptures on a piece of paper. And I'd read them every time I ate, you know, food, breakfast, lunch, and supper. I'd read them before I ate my meal and I thanked God that I was free of diabetes. Amen. And she said, in 30 days, I started getting sick. I thought, what's going on? Went to the doctor, he goes, well, stop taking the insulin, he said. You don't have diabetes, it's making you sick, taking the insulin. <laughs> and she was free and she said, well, ever since then, I ate all the ice cream and pie I can get. <laughs> now, okay, what happened? What happened? Tell me what happened. You gotta tell me how she did it. She planted the seed, kept it in her spirit. Thank God that she had it because it was his promise. Even though she didn't see it yet, all she saw was dirt. Little by little, it began to change on the inside. And one day it was mature. And when it agreed with heaven, all of a sudden faith was there, which gave heaven the legal jurisdiction. The anointing brought healing to her body and she was set free. Now this is how you do it. Guys, this is your year. This is your year. The world is so desperate to see God. You need to be an example. Isaiah 61 says that God sets you as a planting of the Lord, a display of his righteousness for the display of his splendor. You're a planting of the Lord. He's planting all kinds of occupations. You know what he wants in that occupation? He wants you to be number one. He wants you to shine. He wants you to look different. He wants people to go, wow. You say, well, I couldn't be number one, why not? Well, I couldn't, why not? Well, you know, here's a guy, eight, 18 trucks he owns. When I, when I first met you, you didn't have one truck. You were driving for someone else, you are thinking about maybe doing furniture or something. Now he's a multimillionaire, has 18 semis on the road every day. That's in about four years. 
because it changed how you thought and God began to give you those ideas on the inside and you held on to the promise and it produced.